Hello everyone, I'm Grayshaw17, and today I'm going over the update for Company Bros 3 involving what's to come in the future. Um, that said, I should probably address that I haven't really touched on the most recent set of patches and stuff to Co3. Short version, uh, I think it's overall really good. There's some stuff they could tweak, like the Brumbar and the Advanced Infantry with Rangers, and more specifically the 105 with the 33% recharge rate and fire rate that especially a vet one just is a very oppressive to just armor and tanks and just anything that gets hit by the artillery um, with the uh, shell shock ability, some stuff that could be tweaked and, and adjusted. But overall, I think the game is a much better state. The, uh, the kill rate, the responsiveness of the game, the visual uh, quality of it, uh, again, performance, I've always had no issues and I'm hearing that people who have had issues, it's a little better for them. Uh, just overall very positive stuff um and again the maps and everything that they have added like black gold 4v4 guy really good um though expect me to talk about this game and other games more as now that things are more calm quote unquote uh with me uh, as pretty much this summer is just me been kind of taking a step back after moving and everything on those lines it's just i need to catch my breath i need to get myself focused and actually the most recent tournament, thanks to Avadi, which expect content from that, uh, from the best games, from the best players that joined in from the 1v1 space, uh, helped me get a better understanding of the game. And that was my biggest gripe, was me trying to understand the game. And I think that and a few other things really helped at least give me a better picture of where Company Heroes is at and what people um, are currently complaining about, needs adjusted or, you know, or, or the positives about the game. So then I'm going to take that and try to uh, talk about this, which is the uh, fall and winter roadmap. So uh, right now we have the mid-September, the November, and the uh, anniversary updates. Those are like the major ones they announced. I'm sure they'll probably do maybe like minor patches, stuff like that. And again, around December, January, they really don't like patching because of the holidays and focusing on other stuff. I get that. So we're going to focus on this. So mid-September, the update involves uh, three new maps, which is good. I will say the critique overall for this is 1v1. And especially since I just covered a 1v1 tournament, a lot of people are asking about 1v1 maps. And I will say the World Builder uh, Discord, the, the, the same Discord that a lot of the map makers that entered my contest, uh, that got us uh, steps and uh, Oasis Depot. So two of my maps that entered and did very well in the contest uh, made it into the main game. Now, I'm still waiting on a few uh, from that uh, overall uh, contest to make it into the game. They're still, you know, in the uh, workshop and people are still working on them. So no issues there if, you know, they don't eventually get in. At least people still have access to them. But uh, it wouldn't surprise me if the quote unquote 4v4 community map was maybe one of those entries or maybe one that is currently making its rounds in the community that I haven't been aware of yet. Um, again, if you have a good 4v4 map, let me know. I might do it for Fan Friday or enter it, but it's going to be a Relic 2v2 and a Relic 3v3. And again, what I've heard is that Relic, because of the, uh, sh the shift in overall development, uh, in priorities such as them taking over Company Furrows and separating themselves from Sega, again, them not really focusing on console. I will say I'm a little disappointed they didn't kind of keep working on console. I get it. It's something that, it again, spreads your, yourself too thin. And if anything that we learned, especially, let's focus on making the PC version the best it can be rather than separating and then slowly trying to catch up. And so 2v2, 3v3 has some good Relic content. 4v4, hope the community will knock it out of the park with something. Map improvements, they do doing these slight tweaks uh, to maps to adjust them and make them uh, more appealing. Right now, I... Hmm, I'm trying to think like the big ones that I would adjust or change and maybe the one is South Wetlands I believe that's what's called the that one I'm just not a huge fan of just fighting in the middle of that map now here's the thing so I just did a tournament and live replay mode is not available I couldn't do it live so we had to do replays which again the replay system for downloading and then covering immediately I enjoy that that's the one thing I will give Co 3 I do wish that in this major update, one of the things that they do is to improve the UI, or not UI. Well, yeah, kind of the the interface of the replay system because it's too cluttered. Just have it so that way you click on a unit and it goes to that faction. And you can have it on the top right and it automatically goes to the faction for that side. So the allies, 
you know, switches to that on the axis, switches to that, whatever the case may be. Right now you have this bottom section that doesn't need to be there and repeats information on top. I, we, I've gone over it before, but still would be nice. In-game leaderboards, okay, you're adding that. Additional gameplay improvements, I think the biggest thing right now is still pathfinding. That can be somewhat of an issue with it running the buildings or just being body blocked or other things like that. Light vehicle tuning, I'm assuming this is in reference to the Greyhound and other light vehicles that are maybe slightly overperforming like the 8 Red. Um, you have that stuff. 75s I've seen pretty popular in 4v4, in 1v1 not so much, but uh, yeah, flak filling is still pretty strong, other things like that. Unit distinction version two, I'm assuming what they're trying to do is make sure the units pop out of the map. So like, for example, my thumbnails, while they, the visual update they did really did help like make stuff pop out, at least when I'm making re, uh, you know thumbnails, it, it does help a little bit more. I think they're just still trying to make sure that the unit pops compared to the terrain. VFX improvements, uh, probably the biggest thing is the explosion. If you can continue working on the explosions, I think that's the biggest thing to really like capture the eye, especially for like thumbnails, stuff like that. Um, Cause again, Code 2 saw some of the best explosions that I've seen. Again, new 4v4 relic map. I'm curious to see what that is. If I had to pick a 4v4 relic map that I would prefer like going through, hello. Oh, cat's just jumping on through. Thank you, cat. Uh, if I had to pick some, one of them, I would, this might be a weird one, but more like an, a complete urban city, like a, an actual city environment. I know you have like Magano Gap or Monte Cavo. That's kind of like you have the town in the center or on the side. I mean, uh, for me, I would want a 4v4 map that is literally fighting in a city. Uh, I know that might be a little bit more difficult, but I think that would definitely be more unique. Winterline is kind of like a destroyed fortification area trying to go through the rest but none of them and you have like oasis depot that literally has like the center of town and everything else around it but i mean truly a urban environment for 4v4 i know that with performance that might be an issue like with sitar summer that was a problem in code 2 with its hit um but you, you, i'm thinking of something like Ungermood, which was a 4v4 map they turned to a 3v3 but it kind of had a similar vein um you could do essence steelworks which is very much like an urban environment that felt like you're in the heart of an industrial complex or um you know just something along those lines i think that those sort of maps is kind of what maybe co3 needs or kind of for that sort of setting uh but hey uh, we'll, we'll see what they do october events night witches this is interesting oh i'm sorry jumping back to the september because the night witches were a russian uh uh air force group that was essentially women in the air force that were given like old uh, planes that's why they're flying at night but essentially they would take off and they would almost like glide to their target uh they did very well uh overall and again it was like something where it's like well we'll give uh the women you know planes and eh, hopefully they do well and they exceeded all expectations so i don't know how that's gonna play because again the idea is you know that's an air force and co is more army so is this what just focusing on airstrikes and uh, really pump focusing on air force battle groups? I, I I don't know. So we'll see how what that does. December is get together. I'm assuming this is good. Most if I had to guess, this is going to be play with friends. Really focusing on that stuff. And then ride or die is like more armored focused events. I do like them doing events that's at least interesting um, and gets like bonuses, cosmetics, other things like that for free. Hopefully. Uh, but get together, I'm assuming, is, hey, get the game for 50% off and play with your friends. Again, at this point, I think Co3 is a good enough state. I would recommend it to people in, in the RTS sphere. Um, kind of like I hear Warno has improved over time. So it's like, oh, oh I should check that out. Um, or I believe since Civil Solar Empire 2 was in early access on Epic Store, it just released on Steam. I'm hearing good things from my friends who had picked it up. So uh, again, I heard mixed things when it first released in early access. So again, improvement over time and uh speaking of early access right Ra raketten reich or ratten reich sorry uh, not raketten ratten reich just released an early access i didn't realize it was gonna be early access for that game but yeah a year apparently so you know, we'll see i've heard not great things about that one um but i have it downloaded i need to play it so i will this one's okay this is the fascinating thing heavy tank battle groups is every faction gonna get it? Because right now every faction has four. So this would be the fifth one. This, this would be the fifth. 
uh i don't mind a battle group expansion uh overall and again it seems like they're pricing them at like ten dollars to me commanders and co2 were what th with 299 i think for a battle for for a commander i think i believe so 299 do like 499 for a single battle group because it is essentially two commanders in one $19.99, I guess, or maybe do a special where you can get all of them for $14.99 or something. The point is, I get that they're doing that. And again, I know they're going to do the thing is, well, you can use 10,000 uh, cosmetics to unlock it with in-game you know, currency, or you can unlock it early with that other one or, you know, discount. I get it. Uh, I hope. But so I'm assuming that's going to be the pricing. What's it going to contain? Well, okay, let's think about this for a moment. So going between each of them, the British already have Churchill's. So I could see something like a Comet or something along those lines uh, kind of in play. They already have their tank destroyer with the Archer. So I don't think we're gonna see a TD or a heavy TD. I think it would be something in the lines of either. And yeah, I don't see a Firefly because again, that's repeating the purpose of the Archer. So if I had to guess, it would be something like a Comet, which is like a main battle tank sort of area. For the brits and it does kind of fit because the matilda and the um what's it called the churchill uh, are both heavy armored but their guns aren't necessarily the best versing like a panzer four or panther or something bigger um you have the black prince but the black prince is very slow and it, it has a very good gun against armor i think a comment an overall around heavy tank that's good against most targets kind of fits that role that the british need for the vermok there's a couple different ideas. Um, some people are pointing out that they need the, t the King Tiger. I would actually be betting on an elephant because the elephants were transferred to Italy and the Germans, I could see them needing the role of a tank destroyer. So something like that, I could see them fitting in uh, to the game. Next up, we have the Americans. You could add in something like the Jumbo. I think the Jumbo would be more interesting than going with something like a uh, Pershing. Because the Pershing was in Go 2 and that's fine, but if you do something like the Jumbo, at least it's something that is wasn't in Co 2 that is a unique unit to Co 3 or something along those lines. Rather than the Elephant that was featured in Co 2, then you're bringing that in. It's like, okay, we're repeating some of the same units. Um, again, uh, kind of going it under the same vein, that leaves the Dock and that's the most, what do you do, right? Because the dock already has the tiger, and that's essentially when the quote unquote heavy tank. So, do you give them the panther? Because, again, that seems a little off. The panther really was more in Italy. So, okay, so what I'm thinking of is the P2640. That's like a, oh god, Italian heavy tank, which it's more of a medium and has a 75 millimeter gun. Uh, again, maybe a kind of, I don't know. The, the point is, that maybe is what you bring in but again it really was deployed in italy but you want to have that thing in africa go right ahead the dock is the weird one and if dock's the weird one then are they just going to do three battle groups are they going to do two battle groups i really hope it's four that way it's a, everyone gets a new battle group and it does feel like a major update to the game but we'll see again four new maps hopefully one per um again multiplayer balance they they did they're doing it in november so i'm assuming you'll be like kind of figuring out what they do afterwards um again audio improvements other things like that i'm not here to speculate on more technical stuff again the replay system in the live observer mode affects me and other people for tournaments um if we're really going to push for that which is why i've been kind of been hesitant with it uh, ovadi did his tournament but i've kind of been hesitant on sponsoring or promoting that stuff so or pushing for it because i'm kind of waiting for the stuff to be there to, to be optimized for it before i'm like okay another 4v4 tournament or something like that so yeah overall um do i think these are too little no i think that these are good and i think the idea of adding four maps in february a number of maps in september a number of maps in november seems like relic are finally getting their groove and actually having a decent amount of maps out at, at one time so that's good I'm, i think that's fine now there are some people that, and again, I and I'm one of them that was expecting an expansion, a proper expansion to the game. Though I understand maybe that that may not be likely, uh, just because of the fact that I feel like Relic maybe 
divided itself up with the single player stuff too much and now they're kind of like okay we need to fix multiplayer 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 which is fine but i do think they did get a lot of goodwill from the ordeans assault I, I know that was 10 years ago at that at this point but like they got a lot of goodwill from that expansion and i hope that they don't kind of put the expansion on the back burner and they do release something and you could do something similar to starship troopers where it doesn't have to be this giant expansion you could do like little dlc campaigns that kind of fit a different setting you could do three missions in greece as the italians if you want and then bring out the italian faction you could do a couple missions in the balkan region as the soviets and kind of bring them into it you don't have to do this big expansive campaign just uh, two to five missions sell it for five bucks or you know uh, something like that and that way people can just be like oh that was fun handful of missions you got and again you got a handful of cool units and make the units fun and interesting and just yeah i think that's fine especially for like five dollars for like three missions or you know four, five missions something like that could be interesting just like this little tiny campaign play as the free french that would be fun um that's the other thing is if they were doing if they were to include another uh like kind of group what they were doing with the uh, the Australians, that was another idea, was to include something like the RO44 for the Free French. That would be fun. I I, I think that could be a fun uh, tank. And uh, yes, I know you could say, well, Grey Shot, you know, certain tanks, they only produce some. They have the Black Prince, only like five or six were produced. So yeah, they, they can add it. As long as it was made, they can add it. It's fine. But yeah, again, it's really just balancing and fun. That's the main things. But yeah, that's my overall thoughts on it. Let me know what you guys think. I'll try to keep this uh, sh not too long. But uh, again, thank you again for your time. Hoping for the best for this. And I'm um, looking forward to see what maps are coming out in September. Because yeah, that's only a month away. It should be brought pretty quick. Especially if it's a new 4v4 map. Again, keep up the pace. Good stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll see what they do. But until then, this has been Grayshaw17. I'll see you guys next time hello everyone this is a gray shot one seven before y'all go let me give a special shout out to patreon supporters joey g240 malab big cooch afaria ace pyro shark tony b 95 epic pleb thank you all for your incredible support and in helping me grow my channel and support my channel and everything i do thank you and to the rest of you thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time